While we've hopefully learned the basic definitions of position, velocity, and acceleration, how are these quantities related to each other? When it comes to kinematic problems in AP Physics 1, the only equations you truly need to know are the four kinematic equations shown here, though they'll be given to you on your equation sheets. These will essentially act as a toolkit for solving all types of different situations, and the process to do so is really quite simple. All we need to do is select the right tool, or the right equation, with the most variables given to you in the problem. If you look closely, each of these four equations have a different combination of position, velocity, acceleration, and time variables. With this being said, let's take a closer look at some common examples where each of these equations can be applied to, and see which equation fits best for each. Let's look at this first problem here, which asks us to find the velocity of a rocket after a period of uniform acceleration. Now, before solving any part of any question, I first like to write out a list of the variables I'm either given or not, listing out initial and final velocity, acceleration, displacement, and time. Here, I can easily see that I'm given an acceleration and time, which I'll write out and convert to standard units of meters or seconds if needed. In addition, I can also notice the problem gives me the initial velocity of at rest, or zero meters per second. With these three variables given, we can see that this kinematic equation would be a perfect fit, as only one variable in this equation is not given in the problem. Doing some quick math with your calculator, the final velocity is not hard to find. An identical process can be applied to this problem here, which asks us for the distance a car travels given its initial and final velocity, as well as the length of time it travels for. Once again writing our list of variables, a perfect equation to apply here would be equation 2, which contains all of the variables given except for the change in position, or the variable being asked for. Simply plugging these numbers into a calculator, our distance traveled is very straightforward to solve for. Now, this question asking for the displacement of a car is no different from before. Writing out our list of variables, the only interesting thing here is the car is decelerating, or has a negative acceleration. Now, lucky for us, this question basically explicitly writes the negative sign. With that being said, equation 3 has all the variables given to us as well as the one we're solving for, and we can once again plug and chug to arrive at our answer. Finally, this question about a stone being thrown up needs a couple of extra context clues. First, after writing out our given variables, it may seem that we don't have nearly enough information. However, the vital thing to remember, especially in the upcoming units on projectile motion and 2D kinematics, is that the acceleration due to gravity is always 9.8 meters per second squared pointed downwards. In this case, because our stone is moving upwards, we can call gravity negative 9.8 meters per second squared to compensate for the opposite directions. With this little tidbit here, we can notice that equation 4 fits perfectly just like the previous examples, and solve for our velocity of the stone at 12 meters high. Many times, however, you'll need a little bit of extra work to get the variables needed to plug into these equations straightforwardly. Whether that be using the basic definitions of position, velocity, and acceleration from before, or using two or more kinematic equations at a time, keep working through problems piece by piece until you arrive at the solution. With that, you can feel good that you've just finished learning about the four main kinematic equations.